ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات ربي وسلام عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين فان الله تعالى يقول في القران الكريم في القران الكريم بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون we praise him subhanahu wa ta'ala the king the master the sustainer the creator of the seven heavens and the earth and we send peace and blessings upon his beloved muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my brothers i remind myself and i remind you as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in his holy book o you who believe have fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to not die except in the state of Islam, to not die except in the state of submission towards Him. My brothers, I'm going to try my best to give today's khutbah as calmly and as collectively as I possibly can in training, inshallah. And I'm going to try and finish on time too. So make dua and ask Allah to make it easy for me. My brothers, Every one of us, and today I want a favor from you, yeah? I want today, every one of us, let's just try, even if it's acting, even if we're only acting. Let's just try today that the topic I'm about to speak about, we're guilty of. And we're trying to fix it. Because what tends to happen is, I see the brothers, mashallah, even myself included, you go to a khutbah, you pick a nice wall, you sit on that wall, it's nice, it's comfy. And you wait for the brother to speak, and the brother gets up and he talks, and MashaAllah, man. Did you hear what he said? How many people do you know have that quality, bro? People need to pull up, you know? Not him. <laughs> He's a wali of Allah. Who he? No, no, it's never him. This, my brother, if this is your attitude with your deen, you will never learn, you will never move forward. Rather, whenever you sit for a talk, or there's something happening, something going on, you should always feel that this khutbah is completely towards me, that this khutbah is all about me and my qualities and how I need to change. Otherwise, if we don't do this, how are we going to progress? So in short, my brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, He says something amazing. He says, O oh, you who believe, O oh, you who believe, be afraid of Allah. Be afraid of Allah and be with those who are truthful in their speech and in their deeds. The order of Allah, O oh you who believe, be afraid of Allah. Not only be afraid, but be with those who are truthful in their speech and in their deeds. Truth. And standing for the truth is a quality of iman, it's a quality of a believer. And what's funny is that if I was to ask anyone here, brother, do you stand for the haq? Are you someone who stands for justice? Are you someone that is always on the side of the haq? I'm sure all of you will stand up and say, of course, my brother. Of course, I'm someone of the haq. Of course, I'm someone that will always stand with the truth. But today we're here to test that. Because I used to be someone, and this is by no means am I being humbled in any way, shape, or form. Wallahi, my brothers, I'm here to expose my own weakness. Why? Some people say that, brother, if you don't have this quality in your life, then you shouldn't be talking about it in front of people. That's hypocrisy. I say, no, that's wrong, Nahi. Because to stand in front of people and only speak about the good qualities that you have in your life, that's also a form of hypocrisy. But the idea is to expose our weakness. We're all weak. And if we're not ready to expose that, brother, I have this weakness, and I also have it, and speak about it openly, then how are we ever going to address the issue? So if you came to me and said to me, Hubbles, are you someone that stands for the haq? I tell you, of course I'm someone that stands for the haq. Are you someone whose allegiance is to Allah and to His Prophet? I tell you, yeah, of course I'm someone... Will you always stand on the side of justice? Of course I stand. But when push comes to shove, you come to realize that we don't always stand with the haq. When push comes to shove, we don't always stand for justice. 
Wallahi, my brother, be honest with yourself today, please. Because it's taken me a long time to break my own arrogance and pride and admit that Hublos, no, you don't always stand with the Haq. When push comes to shove, Hublos has alliances. Hublos has people that he will align with, that he will be on their side no matter what happens. So it really makes you question. My brother, you as a believer, your allegiance, your allegiance, your word, everything about you belongs to Allah and His Prophet above and before anything and anyone. You as an individual, you belong to Allah and His Prophet, your allegiance, your life, your word, your truth, your stance, your everything belongs to Allah and His Prophet first and foremost before anything. So again, on face value, you told me, brother, yes, of course I know this. Habibi, no, no, no. What I'm saying is, before your father, before your mother, before your wife, before your children, before the boys, you stand, your allegiance is to Allah and His Prophet before anything. Not only is... Am I shouting? I'm shouting, are you? Not only is our allegiance to Allah and His Prophet, but our allegiance is also to the deen of Allah. And the deen of Allah is a deen that is based on haqq. I'll try to get straight into the swing of things so the boys don't get too lost. My brothers, the Prophet of Allah, he says in an amazing hadith, and listen to these words. I'm sure you've heard it all. And again, we claim this. But when push comes to shove, Everyone's true colors always shines. The Prophet of Allah, he says, speak the truth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, speak the truth, even if the truth is against yourself. Wow. Much easier said than done. You know, my brothers, I've been, you know, as someone that works in da'wah and you become someone that the community opens up to. This guy calls you, he has a marriage problem. This guy's got some issue. Yeah, and he, you somewhat get involved in people's personal lives. So again, I'm sure all of you here now, all of you believe that, brother, I stand for haq and for truth and for justice always. The Prophet of Allah, he says, you speak the haq and you stand for the haq even if the haq is against yourself. Not only it's against yourself, brother. Maybe some of you is ready to stand for haq if it's against him, not only against yourself, but even if the hack happens to be against your father, against your mother, against your brother, against the boys, against your own children, even if the hack is against the Muslims. You might think, what? Against the Muslims? Even if the hack is against the Muslims, and you know that that's the hack, you have to stand for the hack. You don't stand for the Muslims at that point. You see, my brothers, when. Am I shouting again? Ya Allah. Wallahi, it happens without thinking. You see, when I tell you stand for the haq, everyone here, and this is how shaitan works, and this is how I caught myself out. When you and I say, brother, stand for the haq, what thought comes to your mind? You think, yes, of course, standing for the haq is a beautiful position. Standing for the haq is a glamorous role. Standing for the haq is something that if I do it, that people will honor me and people will glorify me to somewhat extent. True or not? Yeah, and you and I, when we say stand for the haq and we put scenarios forward, we put such scenarios that anything other than standing for the haq makes you look like a fool. So to your mind, you think, yeah, of course, absolutely I stand for the haq. But the truth is, my brothers, standing for the haq is a very bitter pill that when it comes to your mouth, most of us, we spit it out. Standing for the hack, don't think standing for the hack is something glamorous. Don't think someone, don't think you becoming someone that always speaks the truth and always takes the right stance. Don't you dare think that you becoming this person is going to make you someone that's loved in your community. Look at the Prophet of Allah. He became the most hated. Why? Why, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They knew he was honest. They knew he was, but why? Because the haq is always something that people, believe it or not, you and I, deep down, we don't like to listen to the haq. We actually don't like it. 
We claim we do. But when you hear it, and you don't hear it how your mind wants to hear it, it burns you inside. Some time back, and wallahi there's a purpose to why I'm mentioning this story. I did a little video about Muslims ripping the welfare system. and So when we released it, wow, the backlash from the Muslim community, backlash. Brother, that's a bad go, and you disgraced Islam, and how dare you speak about us like this. And anyway, of course there was people who loved it, and people that disliked it. Anyway, so subhanAllah of the, yani, of the very bad feedback, only three people actually came to tell me. You know, like the old expression, they have lots to say about you, but nothing to say to you. It's amazing. This concept is amazing. They have lots to say about you, but to say to you, they've got nothing. Anyway, very few brothers actually were man enough to call me and get through and say to me, brother, your video really upset me. SubhanAllah, and, and my point is not this particular subject, but just to highlight, all the ones that contacted me are religious brothers with beads. He said to me, brother, you know, how come you're mentioning this topic and why did you bring this up and you know, and you've disgraced us publicly? And I said to him, brother, did I say anything wrong? He said to me, no, you didn't. You said everything, everything that you said was truthful. I said, then why are you bothered? He said, you know, how are people going to look at us? Are you concerned how people look at you or are you concerned about speaking the truth and standing for the truth? Anyway, so after this incident, I became very upset. Why? Because one of the brothers, he said to me, you know, you disgraced Islam. I said to him, brother, do you think I wake up in the morning and I say to myself, how am I going to disgrace my deen? Anyway, wallahi, there's a reason why I've mentioned this whole story. So I was mentioning how upset I am to someone who's also involved in Dawah. This brother's 24 years old. He said words that are way beyond his ears. I said, what's wrong with you? You seem upset. I said, man, I can't believe this is how people interpret it. He said, let me tell you something I learned the hard way. Please, my brothers, this is advice for yourself in your own life. This is advice for the topic of truth. I said, what's that? You ready? He said, people will love you so long as you don't ask them to change or you don't highlight their mistakes, people will love you. But as soon as you ask someone to change, as soon as you highlight the mistake in someone, what happens? What happens? We naturally, our nafs doesn't like it. <coughs> yeah? Well, brother, how come you don't do it? Automatically, we, 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 what? we get onto the defense. We try to change the topic, even though what the brother said is right. Yeah, I really am in the wrong. And that's what I love about the Aussies, you know, because they have this expression. Habib, and, and it's a typical Aussie, call a spade a spade, and don't call it a big spoon. Ach, a spade... It's a spade. Don't call it a big spoon. Like, why are you? It's a spade. You know it's a spade. Nah, but you need to understand. But the way it was, yeah, yeah, well, it's a spade. Don't fool yourself and try to call it a big spoon. It is what it is. It's a spade. So my brothers, you standing for the hug, don't think it's always a glamorous role. Don't think it's always a glamorous role. You know, I'll give you a very good example. That also ha happened in my life. You know, very soon the month of Ramadan is coming. So brace yourselves for the moon white, you know, for, for the moon sighting wars are coming with it, you know. This is Haq and this is Batil and Khutbah, you know, and the whole movies, you know. And it's a big thing. It, and it, in truth, it's sad. It tears our community apart, yes or no? It does. So one time, wallahi, my brothers, and this, I want to highlight this for what reason? Not because this person I'm talking about is a bad individual. I know him, he's a God-fearing man, and wallahi, he's one of the best of people. But what I want to highlight to you today, and this is why I'm exposing my own weakness, that standing for the haq is not as easy as what you really think it is. So anyway, in the midst of all the wars, I came to one of my shaykh, I said to him, shaykh, what's going on? Wallahi, my brothers, I take an oath by Allah as I stand before you here today. He said to me, hubbus, wallahi, and these were his words. He said, Wallahi, I know moon sighting is the haq. Wallahi, I know it's the truth. And Wallahi, if it was up to me, I would only moon sight. But Akhi, what do you want me to do? The pressure of the community is more than that I can carry. Can you see what's happening? He knows it's wrong. He knows what the truth was. But taking that stance... I know he's a strong man. 
Yeah, I'm ready to take on 10, 15 people. But when the whole community turns on you, my brothers, that's the price you pay for standing for the hut. Don't think when you stand for the hack, everyone's on your side. How many times, you know, I come to see, like a husband and wife, and they're getting divorced, and their parents are there. So, the, you know, so they'll tell you the story. And please, my brothers, every one of you has been in a similar situation. Every one of you has been in a similar situation. So you go there, husband and wife, and then they both give their sides of the story. You finished yet? Yeah, you finished? And the truth is clearly, clearly the hak, the right, the just, whatever you want, is clearly on the side of whoever. It's really not important. But let's say it's on the wife, you know, it's the wife's right. Khalas, the wife is in the right. She's clearly right. So I said to the brother, uh, I said to the brother, I mean, it's, uh, it's clear, I mean, obviously it's black and white. Yes, we know it's not. That's fine, that's fine. But then the brother's wife, but then the brother's mother would be there, or the brother's father is there. I say, Hajj, you heard what I heard? Yeah. It's pretty clear, yeah? It's me, yeah. So your son's in the wrong, yeah? He says, yeah, my son's in the wrong. I was like, okay, good. So, so now take a stance. He said to me, but what do you want me to do, man? That's my son. I have to stand with him. You might laugh her off now, but how many of us have been in a very similar situation? How many of us, we've been in a very similar situation. And like I said, I've come to expose my own weakness. Well, like there's an incident that happened with me in school days. Every time I think about this topic, it burns my soul wide. Because I remember one time we were at school, and there was this guy, I would love to find him. His name was Jason. I don't know anything more than that. I remember his name was Jason. The boys used to say he's half Yahudi, half Mabarif Shu. So automatically back then at school, Habibi, he was ex, he was off the bat. Poor guy, wherever he went, kaffat ala anfu, ala ronsu, sahsuh, wherever he went, the guy, abekul kaffat, left, right, and center. And no one actually really knew, was he half Jew or not? Yeah, he was just, khalas, you know, when one of the boys, he spread something. Anyway, so one day, we were sitting in the quadrangle, and all the boys were sitting there on the stairs, and he came and he had a brand new phone, and it was, back then, it was the 8810, you know, that chrome little slide thing? If you had that back then, Habib, you were the Don Colioni. So this guy rocked up and he had this little phone and all the boys, you know, all sitting there. So, typical, you know, jahil, leb, thug thinking, this little Yahudi, bro, he's, he's fine, well, khalas, I'm going to rip it for him. Ya Allah. So khalas, what did the boys have in their head? They're going to rip it. Show us your phone, man, show us your phone from one hand to another. There's 50 of us sitting there. One hand to another, boom, the phone went. And I seen where it went. Wallahi, I seen where it went. But I'm one of the boys, and he's supposedly half Jew. Where's the phone? Oh, where's the phone? So he came to me, he asked me, man, did you see where my phone went? Now, every one of you has been in a very similar situation. Now, there's a clash inside between what? We claim our allegiance is to who? To Allah and His Prophet. Our allegiance is to what? To the haq. Have you seen the haq in front of your eyes? So most of us, sometimes, you know, there's a drama with the boys. There's a drama with the boys. And whatever, his brother does wrong. So the boys come to pull him up. Akhi, man, your brother did one, two, three, four. He goes, yeah, look, I know he did wrong. I know he's in the wrong. But i got to stand with my brother, brother. That's what it is, you know. It is what it is. Wow, well, it is what it is. Clear black and white is in front of you. Clear haq is in front of you. So that's what I'm saying. When push comes to shove, where does our allegiance really go to? Is it really to Allah and His Prophet? Is it really to the haq? Or is my allegiance really when push comes to shove, it's to my mother and my father, to my children or to my brothers? Or some of us even worse, it's to my nationality. No matter what Lebanon does, Habibi, they're on the haq. Why? Because I'm from there. You? Yeah? Is that how it works? Is that how it works? The Prophet of Allah says, speak the haq even if that haq is against yourself. So he said, Muhammad, did you see who took the phone? So I did what most of us do and say, yeah, look, you know, I didn't stand against the bottle. So what did I say to him? Thinking I'm smart. 
But really, I was a Jaben. I said, brother, I didn't see anything, man. I didn't see anything. Go and ask. Because he seen that I was standing a little bit, like he knew the phone didn't come in my hand, you know. I said, brother, I didn't see anything. Wallahi, every time I think of that incident, I remember the day that I slumbered this brother, man. For the sake of the boys who you know in the drop of the... Wallahi, in the drop of a dime, bibi'ak b'frang. When push comes to shove, Habibi, trust me, you know all these boys, who, nah, brother, you know, we're like, we're like that. Habibi, Allah, back. sit down and relax. Can someone give him a bottle of water, please? Because when push comes to shove, when push comes... Yeah, if brothers, Habibi, ubaad b'frang, they're selling each other out for something far less, then what have you left for the boys, Yanni? When push comes to shove, our true colors, they shine. When my kid does something wrong at school and the teacher comes to tell me, you know, Mr. Oblas, please, you know, your son did one, two, three, and obviously he's in the wrong. Yeah, but you need to understand he only did that because the other kid one time last week, he said to him, you know, and the whole film, the whole, the whole musical comes out. Everything to do what? To beat around the bush. The Prophet of Allah, he says, speak the truth. The truth is not easy, my brothers. Don't think taking the stance of truth is a glamorous position. You know, how many times have we heard that the Sahaba, when they were offered the job of authority, when they were offered the job of responsibility, they ran away from it. I used to think, well, because they're so humble. Yes, they are humble. But in truth, I feel like they knew that standing for the haq is not as easy as what you really think it is. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah wa lillah. Inna alhamdulillahi nahmadu wa nasta'inu wa nusalli ala al-habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, earlier I mentioned that you speak the haq even if the haq is against yourself, even if the haq is against the Muslim, even if the haq is in the hands of another Muslim, you know, of someone that's a non-Muslim, you are ordered by Allah to stand for the haq. I'm sure some of you must have Man, what the hell is, is this guy on the payroll? Yeah, and like, is he coming here to infiltrate through us and try to teach us that? Wallahi, my brothers, this is the order of Allah and His Prophet. And I want to share a story with you that happened with the Sahaba. And I'm sure, inshallah ta'ala, that this story will wrap up the whole topic that I'm trying to mention. <coughs> so the story goes, and this is a Sahih story. The story goes that when Ali bin Abi Talib, Ali bin Abi Talib was Amir al Mu'minin. And not only was he Ali bin Abi Talib at the time, he was also what? Amir al-Mu'mineen. His shield was stolen. His shield for war, for battle was stolen. Please try to live this story and I'll try and stop and inject a few things that I feel are very important. But please, just a couple of minutes left, try to live the story with me. So Ali bin Abi Talib, he's stolen, his, his shield is stolen. So he's walking in the marketplace and he sees a Jew selling it. He looks at the shield, he goes, man, this thing looks exactly like mine. So he picks up the shield. He's looking at it, then he finds markings that he knew. This is de yeah, it's definitely, you know, every one of us on his phone, there's a particular mark. You know that's mine. So Ali finds some markings on the shield. Khalas, he's convinced beyond all doubt. This, you know, not only is mine stolen, this is it, 100%. So he says to the Jew, he says, Oh Jew, this is my shield that you're selling. And it was stolen from me. He didn't accuse him of stealing it. He said to him, but it was stolen from me. This is mine, it belongs to me. So the Jew says, no, this is my property and I'm selling it. So now we obviously have a very typical dilemma. It's mine, now it's not. Uh. So Ali bin Abi Talib, who at the time was Amir al-Mu'mineen, who really didn't have to do anything. He would have took the shield, and know your role. He could have very well done it and no one was going to open his mouth with Ali bin Abi Talib. So Ali bin Abi Talib says, fine. Obviously there's a situation here. We can sit down and argue about it all day long or we can sort it out like civilized people. Today we don't sort things out like civilized people anymore, do we? Eh? That's my gap versus your gap. Huh? It's my boys versus your boys now. So Ali bin Abi Talib goes to the court. You know this story? Well, it, it, it does the dabki in my head, this story. 
Does, it does the dabki, the whole realm. He took the Jew to the court system and said to the judge, he says, I have a dispute with this man. He says, fine, they walk in, proper court system. He says, what's happening? Imagine, imagine Amir al-Mu'minin, not only he's the leader of the Muslims, but he's Ali bin Abi Talib, and he's standing in front of a Muslim judge that he assigned. <laughs> yani Ali is the one that assigned the guy. He says, this Jew has my shield and my shield... Am I shouting again? <laughs> he says, this Jew has my shield and my shield was stolen from me and it's my shield. You know, I have to pause. Forgive me, I have to pause. Imagine this judge. This judge... Forget that he's Amir al-Mu'minin. Bro, that's Ali bin Abi Talib. That's... According to some valid opinions, the first Muslim ever, Ali bin Abi Talib, the first Muslim ever. Not only the first Muslim, he was raised in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Not only that, the Prophet of Allah promised him Jannah countless times. Not only that, he's married to the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who will be the queen of the women of paradise. Not only that, he's the father of Al-Hassan wa Al-Hussein. Not only that, he's Amir al-Mu'mineen. Yani, does Ali really have to twist any of our arms and tell me, Wallahi, this is mine? Habib, after, but it's yours. I don't care what the Jew has to say. And how many times have you heard a one-sided story, but because it came from your mate? Khalas, you already made a conclusion, eh? So the judge talked about being in a sticky situation. He says, uh, Ali, since you're the one making the accusation, he says, uh, do you have any proof? Do you have any evidence? Do you have a witness? So Ali bin Abi Talib, he says, yes. And I want to ask you, by Allah, and be honest with me. Does someone like Ali bin Abi Talib, does he need a witness? Be honest. Does he need a witness? He says, uh, Ali, you're putting me in a sticky situation here, man. He says, do you have a witness? So Ali bin Abi Talib says, yes, I do. The judge says, alhamdulillah. He says, who do you have? He says, my son, Al-Hassan. Well, if that was you and I, <laughs> get the Jew and everyone jump on him. And, and So look what the Muslim judge says. He says, Ya Ali, he says, you know, I can't take Al-Hassan as a witness. He's your son. What the hell? Now imagine you, Ali bin Abi Talib. Habib, forget the shield now. You little odd day now. It's between me and you now. Why are you going to put the Jew over me? Left and right. And what do you leave so I can spray your house? So Ali bin Abi Talib, he says, I have my son al Hassan. So the judge says, he says, Ali, please, man, do you have anything else? He says, no, Allah, that's all I have. He says, since that's all you have, and the only witness you can give me is your son, he says, then I have to rule in favor of the Jew. Stand for the haq even when, <laughs> even when, even when it's against yourself, even when it's against your dad, even when it's against your amir, even when it's against a Muslim. Stand for the haq because that's the quality of a believer. Call a spade a spade and don't call it a big spoon. If your brother's in the wrong, swallow the pill. I'm not saying, I'm not saying you turn your back on your brother. I'm not saying that, that you let your son go. I'm not saying that you, no, no, but call it for what it is and take a role for making the wrong right. That's what it takes to be a man. So I'm not saying that, you know, if my son did something, I'm not telling you to abandon your son and leave him. No, that's not what's being said. No, you stand by your son. Of course, that's your son, but you call it for what it is. If he's in the wrong you tell him it's in the wrong, and you take a stance for the haq, and you try to make the wrong right. So the Jew, he doesn't know, he's thinking, what did I smoke this morning? Am I seeing this? That's Amir al-Mu'mineen, and he took me to a Muslim court in front of a Muslim judge, and he ruled in my favor. So it's a sahih hadith, uh, you know, it's a sahih story. So the Jew bears witness. He says, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah and he accepts Islam. But you know, for you and I, 
The most amazing part of the story is while at the end the Jew accepted Islam. Habibi, that's not the amazing part. The amazing part is even when the judge ruled against Ali bin Abi Talib, Ali bin Abi Talib didn't kick up a stink with the judge. The Jew, when he seen this, he accepted Islam and he says, by Allah, this shield does belong to Ali bin Abi Talib. It was stolen from him, and yes, I was selling it in the marketplace. Sometimes you, you take a stance, you take a stance in bottle, you take a stance in the wrong position, thinking that you're trying to twist the situation to swing it your way. What you don't realize is if had you just stood for the hack in the very beginning, even if it's bitter, trust me, in the beginning, nobody likes it. Trust me, trust me, those who take a stance in the beginning, no one likes them in the beginning. No one likes them. I remember years ago, years, years. I lost count how long ago. I remember still to this day, the first time I, me, myself, the first time I ever heard of a marriage here in Sydney where the women, are, were, where the women and the men were segregated. The wedding was for someone from Bat Arja. I can't remember who it was. But I wish I knew who it was so I could go kiss his hand. And I remember, bro, I remember back then, yeah, I'm sure, did you hear? They had a wedding and the women were together and the men were together and he caused this massive fuss. But he was the pioneer that started that in our community for as long as I know, yeah, anyway. At that time, he was the most hated. But now every other wedding that ever followed in his footsteps, who's getting the rewards for it? Standing for the hack, my brothers, is not an easy thing. Don't be quick to fall all over yourself and claim, brother, I'm a man for the hack. Take a minute, step back, and really ask yourself, are you really? Are you really? Inshallah, <coughs> my brothers, the last thing I want to speak about, there goes uh, cutting it short for you guys, um, is this conference that's happening, the UMA's conference, uh, Quest for Success. I'm sure you've heard about it. Um, the Daily Telegraph, uh, you know, thank them very much for they gave us a lot of free advertisement. It was all over the front cover. So thank you to the Daily Telegraph. But uh, Quest for Success is a conference that's happening. When's this happening, Hamid? Next weekend. Not this weekend. Next weekend. Uh, it's on a Sunday. It's a massive, massive event. Uh, mashallah, the UBA, and it's costing them hundreds and thousands of dollars. They have speakers coming from all over the world. There's 12 speakers, there's markets, there's big events, there's children's section, there's rides, there's Zaki, there's... They've, it, a lot of time and money has been invested to put this conference together. Now, my brothers, what I want to very quickly say is it really breaks my heart to see that when organizations go through so much effort and so much hardship to put something together for the community, the community doesn't rock up. Or what's worse, I'm not sure what they're charging, I think it was like, I heard yesterday someone said to me, brother, 70 bucks a ticket, are you serious? Habibi, Inta, when you go fishing, you little spinner, when you go fishing <laughs> for hours, you put $200 with a big smile on your face, yeah, you most likely missed Isha and you missed Fajr and you come back home and you're doing the little man farah and happiness. But $70 for Allah and His Prophet to go there and benefit yourself and take your wife and benefit your children and maybe just maybe learn something. And even if you don't learn anything, then at least you take your children to an Islamic environment. Just last night we we're talking about now, now in our schools, you can't tell your kid, you can't tell your child if he's a boy or a girl. Have you heard this? You can't tell your kid if he's a boy or a girl. They need to choose their own sexuality. <laughs> and we laugh and giggle now. We laugh and we giggle. No, no, no. That you telling him he's a boy is oppression. They need... But brothers, if that's what's happening now, what do you think is going to happen in 20 years' time? We claim that we want change stuff when, you know, when these organizations do great things, no one is there. No one is there to support it. You know, everyone, everyone complains to me, brother, there's nowhere to take our wives and children. But here, here, look, you've got a whole day event. Whole day event. 
there's places for salah and, and there's 12 speakers from all around the world and and you know and muslims from all over the state even all over the country they're coming to get together the rahma of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be descending your kids can have a good time your wife can go and mix with other women and and such a halal environment the brother's complaining about 70 dollars Allah, my brothers, it's amazing. So please, my brothers, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's going to be a massive day. And we want everyone there. Everyone should be there. Allah, this is for us and we need to get behind it and support it. And in this, um, the, brothers, the brothers are selling tickets on this exit and that exit. For today, everyone that is here, 50% off all tickets. So 50% off all tickets, Mr. Seventy Dollars or Mark Sakti Albi. Now you can take you and your wife for seventy bucks, inshallah. All right. So you and your wife, you can, you know. So please, my brothers, you know. Look again, again. I know your nafs doesn't want to be there. I know you would rather sit at home and watch the paint dry than be there. But you will never move forward if you don't break your nafs. Break your nafs. At the very least, let your child say, I remember when we were young, our dad used to take us to Islamic events. I remember, I remember as kids. Amazing. The same family go to the Easter show, spend four, five hundred dollars with a big smile on his face. Big smile for the next two weeks on his Facebook page and WhatsApp. Oh, this show back in the Kazwala family, you went to the Easter show and you had the best time. Spends $500 in the Easter show, not a problem. Wouldn't lose a minute of sleep over it. But he heard about a mad conference. He heard about an excellent gathering. 70 bucks a head. Come on, man. <laughs> you know, when I see people like that, well, I give up hope in life. I give up hope in everything. Khalas, I think, Ya Allah, send the azab down. And just <laughs> please finish us, man. <laughs> finish us. <laughs> just finish us. There's no more point. So please, my brothers, I'm sure you get the point. Get behind it. Support it. Support it. Take your wife. Take your kids. Show your family that there is an alternative. Show your family that there are options. And every dollar you spend in the sake of Allah, this is in the sake of Allah. The Prophet of Allah, he says, the dollar you spend in the sake of your family is better than the dollar you spend in charity. Better than the dollar you spend in jihad. It's better. Better. Why? You spent it on your family. Your family have more rights over you. So please get behind it. Buy your tickets here today and don't be of the losers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the successful. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who stand for the truth. Wallahi, my brothers, this is so difficult. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who stand for the truth. <laughs> Nasallahu <laughs> alayhi